It's just a little proof of the volume of a sphere formula. Of course, hopefully we know that the volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, so we know what we're shooting for. Uh, the idea here is to use something that we know how to find the volume of to find something that we don't know how to find the volume of. And so the idea here is that you're going to use the volume of a cylinder uh, with a cone that has the same height and the same base as the cylinder. And what we're actually going to show is that the volume of the solid remaining after you take out the cone is the same thing as the volume of the cylinder. And this is going to use Cavalieri's principle. Uh, so the idea here is that both this, uh, if, if this sphere has a radius of r, this height here would also be r, okay? So we're saying also that this cylinder would have a radius of r, and it would also have a height of r, and you can see I've, I've put that in there, okay? And what Cavalieri's principle says, uh, we saw it in the previous example, um, you know, it implies that if you have essentially, on a low level, if you have two prisms and each of the bases is the same area, uh, as you continue to do cross sections moving from the bottom to the top, as long as the heights are the same and the cross section areas are the same, the volumes will be the same. The nifty thing about this is that's true even if the cross section shapes change. Like for example, uh, with this sphere, if we're slicing down here, you're getting big circles. As you slice higher and higher and higher up the diagram, you're getting smaller and smaller and smaller circles. And what this is implying here, and you can see that here too, if you did a cross section across right here, you'd have a very large solid circle and you'd have a very small hole being cut out. As you get farther up to the top, your circle stays the same size, but the cutout becomes bigger. So what's happening is because more cutout is occurring, the area of the ring is decreasing. And at the same time, as you move higher up the sphere, the area of the cross-sectional circle slice is also decreasing. And the claim here is that this ring at any level will be the same area as this cross-sectional circle at any level, okay? Um, and so we just need to write expressions for both of those. So here's the key. Notice if the height of this cylinder is r, because it's got to be the same height as the radius of the sphere, uh, and if this is also r, that's an isosceles right triangle. It's an r by r triangle. And so you can see I have that down here. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use d to represent the height up to any particular cross-section that you've taken, okay? Um, and so I've just kind of randomly picked a place to draw this slice in here, and I'm calling that length D, okay? I'm also calling that length D to where my cross-section is uh, over in this diagram as well, all right? Um, and then going from there, uh, we'll just put all this together. So the idea here is that I want to uh, I want to show that the area in terms of D of the cross sections for the cylinder are the same as the areas in terms of D of the um, of the hemisphere. Um, so basically, if you take a little triangle and you make a height of D here, uh, that triangle is going to be similar to the big triangle, so that length is also going to be D. So we can see in our diagram here, if this length is D, the radius of this little circle is also D, okay? So what we've got here is, if I go off here to the side and draw this, you've got a big circle that has a radius of R. The cutout is always gonna have a radius of D, okay? So you're gonna take the big circle area and you're gonna subtract the little circle area. Uh, the big circle area would be pi R squared Okay, you're going to subtract the little circle, its radius is d, so its area is pi d squared. Okay, so the area of any of those little uh, rings, however far you move up, it's just pi r squared minus pi d squared, where d is representing how high you've moved from the base up toward the top. Okay, idea is the same over here. The idea is to show that this circle, which is also d units up from the base, uh, is going to have the same area as that ring has, okay? Well, if this length is D, okay, that's the radius right there as well, right? I can make a little right triangle here, and I need to represent that radius in terms of R. So if you look at this, we've got a little right triangle here. Um, I've got a right triangle with the length of D and the length of R. Um, so I can take R squared minus D squared and take the square root. 
that's going to be r squared minus d squared is going to be the representation of that other side of that triangle, okay, that length right there. So radical r squared minus d squared is the radius of that circle, okay? You find the area of a circle by taking pi times the radius squared. So I'm going to take pi times my radius of radical r squared minus d squared squared, okay? Squaring the square root is going to knock that out. It's going to leave me with pi times r squared minus d squared, which is the same thing as pi r squared minus pi d squared. Well, guess what? That's the same thing as the area of my circle from before, okay? So what you can see here is the ring at any height from the base is always going to be the same as the solid circle at any height from the base, okay? With D representing the height you moved up from the base. So Cavalieri's principle says that this cylinder with a cone cut out will have the same volume as this hemisphere, okay? So how do we show that? Well, now we just write an expression for the volume of the cylinder with the cone removed. So I have this over here. The volume of the cylinder is one-third the area, uh, sorry, the volume of the cylinder is the area of the base, which is pi r squared times the height. The volume of the cone is one-third pi r squared h. Okay, um, but if you go back over here and look, the height is actually r. It's the same thing as the radius of this sphere. So it's pi r squared r minus one-third pi r squared r, okay? So that's pi r cubed minus one-third pi r cubed, which is equal to two-thirds pi r cubed, all right? Okay, so notice the volume of that half sphere is two-thirds pi r cubed. If I want to find the volume of the whole sphere, I can just take that two-thirds pi r cubed and double it, and I get four-thirds pi r cubed, okay? So I have no idea how somebody figured out that the volume of a sphere is twice the volume of subtracting a, a cone out of a cylinder, but that's a nice little proof that shows it using Cavalieri's principle.